Having learned how sound is represented in a computer, there is this really interesting, I think, formula or theorem which is related to this topic called the Nyquist theorem, also called the Nyquist-Shannon theorem. Shannon, you may have come across that name before, Claude Shannon, a really, really influential person in computing. But this theorem, either Nyquist or Nyquist-Shannon, is saying that the sampling rate of sound should be at least twice the frequency of the highest frequency in the sound wave. So let's unpack what this means. So for instance, humans have an audio frequency range of 20 to 20,000 hertz or thereabouts, meaning that really any sound above 20,000 hertz, people or humans can't hear it. It's why your dog might react to sounds which you can't hear, because dogs have got their own re range, other animals have got their own range, and it may be different to humans. It will overlap, but it may be different. And therefore, generally speaking, audio should always be sampled at least at a rate of 40,000 hertz. In our calculations, we tend to do very low numbers, but actually we need about 40,000 hertz or 40 kilohertz sample rate in order to make it a decent quality. Although ideally this should be much higher. 40,000 is really our floor. It should be, as the formula says, at least twice. And so you want it to be higher ideally because the higher sample rate, the higher quality, but as we know, the trade-off is the more you sample per second, the more data gets saved, and so a bigger file size. But generally, you want a really high sample rate. So the way this might play out in an exam question is they give you a range of frequencies, a lower bound, an upper bound, and you need to double the upper bound at least if you're going to recommend a minimum sample rate. Another example of how they might play with this might be examined is they give you part of a wave. Here's just a really simplified sine wave. And let's say this whole wave lasted for half a second. And so to work out its frequency, what I'm doing is just going how many waves we've we got per second. Well, we've got two. Equivalent to going one over 0.5 here gives us two hertz. And let's say this is our maximum frequency. So therefore, our sample rate needs to be greater than or equal to at least four hertz. So it should be much more than four hertz, ideally, but it should be at least four hertz according to the Nyquist theorem. So you just have to learn this theorem, really. Not a hard one to learn, but it does seem a little bit strange at first reading. I think I was confused the first time I came across this. But it makes sense once you've understood why it is this. Why is it twice as much and why is it the highest frequency which matters? Well, here we've got an extension of the same wave I showed you before, just a sine wave, which is a simplification, of course, but it is fine for now. We've got one cycle of this wave here, which is just continued into a new cycle on the right and the left of this snippet. Let's say we're taking one sample per cycle which is going to match our highest frequency. This is not actually useful. Let's say we take a sample at the peak. It doesn't matter where we take it necessarily. Well, it does matter, but for now, let's say we're doing it at the peak. If I'm doing it at the same set interval, we are taking a reading at the same value, which if it is a repeating wave, which is usually not, but if it is, we get the same value, and this is just not very useful for our digitized version. Where we've just got a straight line here effectively as our wave, which is just useless. So if we're doing the minimum suggestion of the Nyquist theorem and doing two samples per cycle, we are doing a better job at approximating our wave because we can do it on both the peak and the trough of our wave. We're able to do the trough as well because I'm doing it twice in one cycle. So it's doing a better job here, but it's still not great. You know, if I join up my lines here, the wave is better than it was before. Before it's just a straight line at once per cycle. Here I've got a better wave in light green but it's still not good, right? It's still not exactly matching my original wave. We want, we want our digitized line to be almost the same as our analog line. So really the moral of the story is you want it to be at least twice, so we can have both the top and the bottom of our wave, but ideally we want more samples, a higher sampling rate than just twice for max frequency in order to make it sound more natural and make it similar to our analog signal.